Well, we are now less than 24 hours before the State of the Union address, the first of Joe Biden's presidency, and it is happening with the nation in the middle of a pandemic that seems to be slowing, which is good news, but a crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border underway and then the Russian takeover of Ukraine happening as we speak. The spotlight on President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris tonight in a News Nation exclusive poll. We are getting a little bit more insight into what is on the minds of Americans right now, what they're thinking, what you're thinking at home. Leland, you have been digging into some of the information in this poll today. President Biden clearly has some work to do in terms of winning back public opinion. Yeah, President Biden will address Congress tomorrow with the lowest approval rating of any Democrat since Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy Carter faced one of the very same issues that Joe Biden is facing, which is runaway inflation. Inflation now is the highest it's been in 40 years, and that is the primary concern of Americans. 80% of Americans in this News Nation poll say inflation is a real concern of theirs. Scott Trainer, director of Race Call Team at Decision Desk HQ, our polling partner on this, is with us on set in D.C. You can't get 80% of Americans to agree that they like ice cream or puppies. It's and true. for them to all agree that there is this one common problem, is that to explain most of President Biden's issues? Pretty much all of it. I mean, like you said, 80% to get anyone to agree to all that is pretty stark, especially given the fact that this is something people are going to be feeling for a while. The prices of gas are not going to go down tomorrow. The price of milk is not going to go down tomorrow. Yeah, and they get reminded of it every day, every day. as they fill up their gas tank, as they go to the grocery store. Uh, in part of that also, the president's message is what I'm going to do about it, but also that I empathize with your problems. And it was one of the reasons that Joe Biden was elected, right? He said that I feel your problems and I can deal with them in a way that Donald Trump was not going to. And I can fix them competently. I can fix them competently. So now we put up the poll. And I thought this was fascinating. The people who voted for President Biden uh, by about eight points uh, over Donald Trump in our poll, which fixes, which jives with the national popular vote. But today... President Trump won, wins 40-35. 16% say they would vote for a third party, 6% not voting. Uh, are we to believe that there's a significant number of people who voted for Joe Biden who would now vote for Donald Trump? Certainly, if it were held today, I don't believe that 16% would vote for a third party. That's more of a, I just don't like anybody, so I'm going to vote for anybody but these two. So that's but a, if in a ballot box, so you, you could be seeing a 12, 13-point spread here. Swing. Easily, easily 12 to 13 point swing, especially if we're held today. Now, it's not being held today, but if we're held today, easily that much. All right. President Biden's going to talk to a lot of different constituencies. Conceivably, the people he needs to focus most of his attention on is that 13 percent, especially if he wants to have a chance for Democrats in the midterm. What are the issues and what are the talking points for that 13 percent? It's pretty much all inflation, right? At the end of the day, what's really hitting these people at home is their costs for milk, the, po the cost to buy a car, whether they can buy a car, whether they can buy a computer, whether or not their kid is going to school every day or being remote worked. It's basically the local domestic issues that he has to work on that he may not have control over. A lot of this is at state and local level. Well, and the other thing about inflation is it has its own timeline. The short run and the long run in economics does not necessarily follow midterm it election cycles. We were talking uh, earlier today, uh, lights are out at the White House in the second floor residence. We were talking earlier today, is there any good news for Joe Biden in this poll? Uh, you basically said no. I came up with one. I wanted to run it by you. Uh, things have changed. And this was your tracking question that you very smartly put in this in terms of who you view as the greatest geopolitical threat to the United States. This is flipped among the American people. It was China a month ago. It is now Russia. Uh, and now 46% of Americans uh, would be in favor of the U.S. defending Ukraine from Russian invasion. That's already happened. But this flip to Russia. If President Biden is able to deal with Vladimir Putin in the same way George H.W. Bush rallied an international coalition to deal with Saddam Hussein, and he fixes this, does that bring him back up in the polls even if inflation continues? I don't know that it overtakes inflation, but it certainly helps him with the narrative that he's competent. Right, we look at his handling of COVID, 
which has been bouncing between 40 and 50 percent in the tracking poll, which means initially they thought he was competent at and has been waning since then. This would be a win in his cap, especially given that if we don't think inflation is going to fix itself in the next six months, at least you can point to this that, hey, I'm a sane, competent leader when it comes to foreign affairs. Yeah, in a remarkable coincidence, the White House has declared uh, that they, you don't need masks at the White House starting tomorrow. Congress has declared you don't need masks starting the city we're to, in. tomorrow. The city we're in declares on the day of the State of the Union you don't need it. Uh, four states ended their school mask mandates on the day of the State of the Union. A remarkable amount of political luck has fallen upon Joe Biden here to be able to declare victory over COVID. Did the American people give him credit for that, or is it too late? You know what? The numbers don't show it yet, but like you said, this all happened now. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like in the next two or three months. As long as COVID doesn't resurge and people are able to go back to work, have their kids go to school, they can afford a vacation, buy a car, that kind of thing, I think we'll see it. But I think inflation might hurt some of that or at least at least uh, dovetail that down. Yeah, and yeah. added bonus, we haven't had a nuclear war. So that yeah. would be helpful too. Scott, yeah. great work on the poll, obviously, as we continue to track it up to the midterms. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Marty. And the other thing that President Biden has got to be given credit for is for as bad as things looked uh, last Monday and Tuesday in terms of U.S. policy on Ukraine. Boy, he said he was going to bring NATO back and get Europe to get their house in order and start buying military equipment and stand up to Vladimir Putin. He has to be given credit for that. As you said, an opportunity to highlight some of the successes right now. Hey, Leland, what's the poll say about Kamala Harris and what people think? Yeah, that's something that probably is not really something the White House is too happy about. We asked and talked about earlier, uh, do you believe President Biden has the mental capacity to be president? 53% of Americans say they disagree with that statement. And they are not that confident that Kamala Harris would be the right person to step in. If President Biden has a health crisis, how confident would you be in VP Harris stepping into the role of president? Only 42% confident, 58% not confident. It also tracks with her disapproval numbers, which are much higher than President Biden. Her approval numbers are much lower. And we've seen over the past couple of months that she does not take the same center stage co-president role uh, that she took at the beginning of the administration. It'll be very interesting to see, not so much tomorrow, because obviously she'll be behind President Biden, but over the next few days, when typically the administration goes on the big road show to sell the State of the Union message, what her role in that will be. We know the president's going to Wisconsin. We'll have to see where the vice president goes uh, coming this week and into the weekend. Mm. A lot of insight into what people are thinking at home tonight. All right.